speak and I look at this sign behind me, I realize two things. First of all, my handwriting sucks. Second of all, I need better markers because I can barely read that and I'm looking at it. So we're going to talk today about being in control of your income. Oh, but first two housekeeping issues. Sorry. Um, uh, the sign that I'm looking at is, our next monthly meeting is Thursday, March 12th in Valley Stream. If you're in the New York area, please come by. Admission is five dollars. Um, but I think you get a lot of uh, a lot of value out of our meetings. Everybody who come, I haven't heard any negative feedback uh, from people who come. I get tremendously positive feedback. We're changing the format a little. Six to seven p.m. is a newbie hour where you can come and ask me any questions. And then seven to nine will be the standard format where there'll be four, where there'll be some networking. We have a presentation at eight, a short presentation, which I think is going to be really good. And then they kick us out at nine o'clock. That is one. Number two, please like this video if you like it. Um, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Share and comment below, please. Uh, comments get answered very quickly. I think anybody uh, will attest to how quickly we respond to comments. Uh, so please do that because it helps us. Sorry about that. Okay. So I want to tell a story. When I started in the mortgage business in 1997, um, it was a much different world then, right? The internet really, I think we had one computer connected to the internet in the office and um, things were very different. So the way we worked, we were a mortgage broker and we used to get rate sheets faxed to us from different lenders. We would broker out deals to different banks and they would they would fax us the rate sheets. And what, what the, the way the mortgage business works, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret, is that a mortgage broker or a mortgage banker is going to lock in a rate and the, sh the shorter the lock right if i lock in a rate for 15 days um i could make more money than if i locked in the rate this is how it worked then things change a little bit than if i locked in the rate for let's say 30 days or 60 days so if you could not lock in a borrower you could theoretically make more money if you waited assuming rates didn't go down okay so and there's two housekeeping things sorry i know i it's redundant apologize okay so what happened for a very long period of time I think during 98 is that rates continued to stay very steady or improve and every time you locked in a borrower if it wasn't for the shortest lock period you were leaving money on the table and after a while I got complacent and I got stupid and I started saying to, to borrowers don't worry about the rate you're not locked in but don't worry about it in other words it was on me and I didn't lock them in because I just figured I'd wait and lock them in when it was when they were about to close. What ended up happening was that I think 99, 98, 99, um, the Fed made an announcement and rates started getting clobbered. I remember literally we had a fax machine where we get our rate sheets. I'd be on the phone with the borrower quoting a rate. While I was talking to him, a rate sheet came in and I told him, I'm sorry, the rate went up at eight. Another rate sheet came in and the rate went up another rate. Like I thought I was lying to him. But that's how crazy rates went up. And I had a small pipeline of loans where I had promised them a rate that if I delivered the rate, um, I would lose money. I'd actually have to bring my personal cash to the to the closing because you could because at some point the rates get I mean, I don't want to get into the nitty gritty of the of the situation, but at some point I couldn't give those rates and we'd have to pay to to close at those rates. So my boss had a conversation with me and he really woke me up and said, you know, you got to fix this. And uh, we fixed it and um, we got lucky a little. And I realized, I and I said to myself, and that's where we get to the theme of this um, uh, video, I can't have my income at, based on something that's out of my control, right? And subsequent to that, I locked in everyone, right? And I said, okay, if I'm leaving a little money on the table, that's fine. But I need to know that if I have a pipeline of five loans, that I'm going to make X dollars on each loan when they close. And that brings me back to the, our business, right? So we're, we're in the real estate investment business, and you have to be in some kind of control of your income. And the only way to do that is to create a system where you have leads coming in and you have appointments being made, whether on the phone or in person, and then contracts being signed and then some disposition of that contract, either assigning it, closing on it, doing minimal work and wholetailing it, doing major work and rehabbing it, whatever it is, or holding it as a rental if that's the way, and then refinancing to get the money back. But you need to create a pipeline and a system. You need to have some control over it. Now, 
it, it's ironic because we, we go into this business to get time freedom and we go into this business because we don't want to work a job that we could get fired from but we need to create a system or else it's really the job runs you instead of you running the job so I talk to a lot of people who start and they do not treat this as a business and they are not systematic about it some people are most are not if you don't treat this as a systematic business and, and the, the real problem with it especially in New York is that it takes a very long time to get it started right even if you are systematic about it and I, I say this a million times and I'll probably say it a million times more when we started marketing direct to seller we didn't get a penny from it for eight months that's a long time and I would say and we were doing it full-time and spending a lot of money so if you're doing it part-time and spending very little money it could take a year sorry I'm baking in here it's like an oven we got a new tenant in the office uh, we, we share office space with other people this guy is really cold and I feel like I'm in a sauna now oh my god sorry so if you're doing this part-time you got to figure it's gonna take a year to get really get a deal going and and that's the problem right because it's it's it, you're doing tasks that nobody wants to do right nobody wants to call sellers who most of them are going to tell you just go screw yourself nobody wants to in the beginning at least seem like you're doing something unseemly even though you're not and you should never take advantage of anybody you really have to approach this as a problem solver and we're going to talk more about that in future videos but it's negative even whether consciously or subconsciously you're calling people and you're going to get rejected and you got to do that for a long time and you got to build up a a, a a pipeline of people who said maybe that you're going to follow up with and you're going to maybe catch one yes that somebody you can do deal with and when you're starting you don't even know if that's a deal right it's hard it's really hard we had a lot of advantages we had money from we had been in business for four years we had we have the mil, a million properties so we had money to pay for the marketing we knew the prices and what a deal was if you're starting it's hard it's hard okay but I'm telling you there's no I don't know anybody else who's on YouTube or anywhere that's talking about doing this in New York so I am begging you to use us as a resource I got a call yesterday from somebody who wants to start call us I'll let you know it's listen it's very hard for me to know if it's a deal if it's not in the areas that my multiple listing service serves I, I you know anybody can Zillow it but that doesn't mean it's right um, but ironically my the my multiple listing service which right now is in Nassau Suffolk and Queens I think is expanding so hopefully there'll be more areas that I can help but um, use me as a resource call let and let me know what you got and I'll be happy to help you right and whether it's financially somebody called didn't know if it was a deal it was a deal we did the deal for them and split the deal with them whether you need money for the deposit whatever it is we can help and um and, and, and the main thing that you need really is some kind of accountability to make sure you're continuing doing the tasks so it's a funny thing if you if you focus on the results and you don't do the tasks you don't get the results but if you sort of know that the results will come and you focus on the tasks then you get the results so it's hard it's not easy uh, it's a simple business crazy as it sounds but it's not easy and you need to be in control and the only way to be in control is to create a system where this is going or it's something whether you're doing it or somebody else is doing it somebody's getting you leads and then you can get deals under contract that is getting di discounted as on the contract is the whole business All right we've done other videos about why you shouldn't go build a buyers list first all the things you shouldn't do but you have to be in control of your income you have to create a system that works so if you need any help with it or you need help on a specific deal feel free to call the number below